Good evening once again friends, welcome and uh, let's go on to the reading for this evening uh, which is on the topic of our voice. August 16th, speech is naturally melodic. See to it that the melody of your speech be pleasant and attractive. Notice the melodic changes that accompany every shift of mood or feeling. Watch for such changes also in other people. Learn to detect in people's voices their sincerity or insincerity, their aggressiveness, defensiveness or deceit, their intolerance, kindness or loyalty. Perception of these qualities depends more on self-knowledge than on specific outer guidelines. Some people can tell a lie so convincingly that even the discriminating may at first be fooled. There are also melodic patterns induced by environment and upbringing. Take such cadences into account to see whether the melody of a person's speech is conditioned or spontaneous. So what a beautiful reading and a very practical one, especially when Swamiji goes through those lists of qualities, you know, how to basically uh, judge what is the motive behind a person. Uh, it also reminded me of um, how Yoganandaji, Nandaji, you know, I recently gave a talk on how to be a success from the same book uh, of Master's Compilations. And he goes into very practical points how to uh, you know, hire somebody for your for a job if you're the employer. Uh, how to gauge them through their eyes, their voice, uh, body language, and such. So Swami again is making a topic which we normally think is uh, it doesn't actually uh, strike us so much, except when we go through some difficult time, perhaps, and uh, at that time maybe somebody expresses themselves in a such a way. Uh, Swamiji, for example, would uh, write in the book, The New Path, how in the moment when Master passed away, uh, he was uh, almost inconsolable like many other disciples. And he said, at that moment uh, came a person and he just embraced me. And he said, he barely spoke anything, but he said he just held my shoulders and just you know, gently uh, gave him some strength. And Swami said, I, how will I ever fo forget that? Uh, uh, courteous or you know that generosity dear friend in that moment and it's so sweet actually Swamiji makes the point as, as I was preparing for this evening's talk at one point Swamiji said that human communication actually chiefly mostly is non-verbal um, you know perhaps through gestures through as Swamiji would say when Yogarandaji would talk or he might say communicate with some of his disciples uh, he said with the most advanced ones, he would actually just uh, maybe look at them or they would catch things by the tone of his voice, which is what he heard Swamiji is implying that he could be talking to a big audience. And it was uh, the experience for I think many of us in the talks we listened to, you know, of Swamiji or in the satsangs perhaps we attended of him or of other acharyas, Jyotishji and other acharyas that somewhere a small thing is said which if not directly was for us because it is spoken uh, it is spoken at the wavelength or at that uh, level where we are requiring help some words can be very fierce call to action some can be very soft reminders uh, you know some can be very simple exhortations so uh, it's very fun and then of course there can be so much humor as <laughs> it is the case with every true saint and uh, i was just thinking actually as i was preparing for the talk that God has a good sense of humor above all, Swami and Master used to say. And here I have to talk about the tone of voice and uh, I have been suffering from a cold for the last three days. <laughs> and I was reading about Swamiji saying that how a nasal twang or a deep voice, flat tone can convey such and such. And I was praying that I hope I get well. And if you're seeing me perspiring so much, it's not because I'm nervous, <laughs> chiefly it's because uh, I just had uh, a tablet to stop my fever and this is how they act by causing profuse sweating. So then friends, uh, coming to the topic uh, of Swamiji saying that be careful or see that your tone of voice is very pleasant and melodic uh, and also attractive. 
let's listen to some stories then you know swami ji would as we all know he spoke many different languages and he wrote so much music too instrumental vocal in different languages and swami ji would say that uh, music has, it, it does not have any language on one level it's a, or it is a universal language and likewise he would say that more than the words that we say our tone uh, you know is perhaps more important as a doctor i can also tell you that there are times you know when you're taking a round or you have to communicate to somebody the passing of their uh, near and dear ones how do you do that in that moment not much is spoken certainly it's not an intellectual presentation of any fact it is more of you know it's like a speaking from the eyes you certainly have empathy towards uh, if somebody has passed away or there's a bigger loss and very little is spoken and uh, similarly when you're going from bed to bed the and in rounds you know i had this experience to see how certain doctors who were very sincere in their efforts in their they were very knowledgeable certainly most doctors are that they would have a way of communicating which never incited doubt uh, insecurity or you know trepidation from the family of the patient but some no matter how much they tried uh, or they would worsen the situation by getting upset or being silent too long and then you know getting like bursting upon the family that it just didn't help matters and uh, i couldn't help but think that also in my in our morning discussions that we used to have in the surgical ward that there were some professors which universally everybody would just wait for them to share their feedback and uh, how was the feedback yes sometimes often what is feedback constructive feedback is when somebody can let you know how to improve yourself but the way it was communicated the intention behind was not to put somebody down it was just to uh, the their tone it was uh, you know that there, there was feeling behind it feeling for the patient feeling for the person who is undergoing training feeling for the larger gathering of doctors who will all benefit from the discussion and i tell you that uh, you will also know this perhaps from your own experience from the field you are from that uh, the wise ones uh, which who were so likable and are unfortunately in today's times few they their tone their voice was soft smooth they were very uh, comforting uh, not censorious at all and i remember actually a very interesting example of when i was just new on the spiritual path and kriyananda ji in one of his books says that if somebody is scolding you for something you have not done if it does not make too much of a difference better uh, not to retort and uh, i was trying to it i got an opportunity to practice it basically i used to handle the female surgical ward and uh, about 25 30 beds and on the other side was the male surgical ward which my senior was overseeing and during the rounds it just so happened that an emergency case came and he had to go in the theater with literally a minute left before the rounds and he just came running towards me and he said aditya i am going in the theater please present my cases i had no knowledge of all those 30 people in his ward but i said okay and i went from bed number 1 with all the head of department the professors students and i was the junior most and i started opening the file and reporting what was written but mostly you have to know it you know just by on on you know spontaneously you know what has happened you been following up those cases so as we went from bed number 1 to 3 by the came by the time we came to 6 or 7 the professor said he said you seem to know hardly anything about any of them <laughs> and i uh, was quiet and uh, i said uh, the other said well, continue and the next patient they asked some critical question and i said let me look up and he just you know at that time scolded me he said what's wrong with you how come you don't know anything about it and i was quiet he was the senior most person and i had deep respect for him and just in that moment before i could speak uh, somebody said oh sir but this is not his ward uh, you see at that time i was confused whether i should say should i not what i was not feeling bad about what was uh, what he was saying to me i was feeling bad about the way it was turning out and i was i was trying to explain but somebody came in but the interesting thing was he was the professor or the senior to the director of our hospital he was that senior 
And when somebody, when one of the juniors said, oh sir, but uh, this is not his ward, he's just uh, doing a small part this morning on behalf of the other fellow, he immediately said, oh I'm so sorry, but he should have told me, Aditya. And my heart just became so big, I was like, wow, he's just like in that moment, he forgot and there were patients, families and everything, but that's the mark of a refined soul. that. Uh, and that you might say on one level is the power of our voice that it can uh, communicate uh, our consciousness and his consciousness was very clear it can communicate it can bring uh, you know peace to people it can calm down situations and it can also be disruptive uh, i remember another story that swamiji said he says this was my final incentive to learn italian actually and he said uh, he was in milan giving a lecture and at that time Swamiji was speaking in English and somebody was translating it into Italian and at one point Swamiji said, I said to the audience, we should be at peace and he said I tried to present it as soothingly as I could and the translator said, be peaceful in Italian with uh, Swamiji says a lot of <laughs> energy and uh, just like unnecessary power and Swami said, in that moment, I told myself, I have to go back home and start learning this language because, again, uh, you know, the words were the same, but the way they were presented was very different. So then, how do we practice this thing into, you know, we all know we have to modulate this. Swamiji said a few guidelines which can help us. First, as he says over there, try to watch out, try to, you might say, test your intuition when you're talking to people, when ourselves we are speaking, is it, are we just communicating, which often people think, uh, you know, is the role of words, that just uh, to say, but a simple example, communication of different kinds has different kinds of impact. For example, email is not as effective in delicate situations as a phone call, which is not as effective as uh, a personal meeting with the person face to face they can see your face they can listen to your tone better perhaps your gestures hand movements your body posture can be more you know expressive and you would be empathizing and you are more open to perhaps something they're trying to say so similarly Swamiji said that the real understanding comes through listening through a silence basically as we appreciate silence not a passive silence but the silence of meditation we might say or the calming or the silence of our hearts feelings when we are open like my professor was he was in that moment totally open um, I remember another experience I myself had which shows how important it is we can miss out some very subtle facts otherwise in life and you know how it happens we keep going through life thinking this is the best on one level it is, we are all trying our best, so that is what it is. But can we not lift our awareness? I'll give you an example. This was in Delhi and uh, I was traveling in a rickshaw with a friend. We had to reach his home, which was inside the campus of uh, All India Institute of Medical Sciences. It is India's premier medical institute. Now, when we, sorry, entered the gates, uh, the auto rickshaw fellow tried to stop there at the gates and it's a big campus so my friend said he take, in, take us inside and he says no I don't want to go inside and he said is this how you talk to doctors what do you mean you don't want to go inside and he got upset which is not a good thing to do right away there can be some reasoning can be done uh, you know as the first step and uh, he said no I won't go inside and by that time I thought this is uh, strange and I said I first told my friend I said calm down I said, it's okay, but yeah, I said, there's no need to get so upset. And I said, we can walk down from here. Our house is not so far. But I said, normally, a person expects to be dropped at his doorstep. And he said, you are right. But by the time he broke down, and he said, but this is where I lost my son last year. And I know all about you doctors. And I felt so bad. I just put my hand on his shoulder. My friend was silent. And I said there was something in his voice which was telling us that this is not just uh, the, uh, the cold, you know, feeling that I don't want to do this or he was not, how do we put it, indecisive or indifferent. He wasn't indifferent. He wanted to do his job. But 
a memory came back and perhaps that memory was ringing in his mind from the time we told him where we want to go, the hospital. So you see that my friend was not able to feel that and somehow I was able to feel that this, uh, this is not normal and, we, and then he took us inside. He took us inside and it was so sweet. So Swamiji was say, making that point that try to feel when we are calm. Uh, Sri Yukteswarji used to say this. He told Yogarandaji during the years of master's training. He said try to listen behind uh, people's spoken word. Kriyanandaji was a very, very, uh, you know, expert, you might say, teacher on this, or friend on this regard, in this regard. He would, you would ask him a question <laughs> and you would be all confused because sometimes you were just in awe of being in his presence. But he would get the heart's feeling. I remember one time he uh, wrote, I think, or I heard him in one of the talks. He said that before I talk to people, I send a ray of light from my heart center to their heart center. He said that he was able through practice to do this for larger audiences also, which is again not surprising because so many times, once in my own presence, I was in a small gathering of about 20 people. Somebody came up to him later and she said, Swamiji, you said exactly what I wanted, I had to hear today. Do you know our thoughts? And he said, actually what I do is I pray to the masters that uh, they say the right thing through me. I, of course, he said, try to stick to the truth of uh, the topic I'm trying to say. I try to stick to that topic. And he said, then when you speak from that center, he said, naturally, and you want to help other people, you're thinking of others. He says, naturally, what you say is going to have um, a good impact on them or the right thing will be spoken. So then let's just listen to a few more things. He says that speech is naturally melodic. Now that's the first line. Now what does that mean? I was reading another beautiful study that Swamiji quoted uh, from many years ago. He said this was uh, a research somebody conducted in California and the fellow uh, studied the DNA sequence of the human cell, of flower cells in flowers and some natural, you know, basically um, things and based on the uh, premise that each atom emanates a sound which scientists know is true. They, it emanates a vibration, a sound actually, physical sound too. So when he studied the sequence and the vibration emanating from it, he said there was actually the arrangement of normal DNA was very melodious and it felt in tune with the harmonious sounds of music of let's say Beethoven or Mozart which have lasted for such a long time and are universally appreciated. So Swamiji said that when he used to compose music or songs, he said going certain distance I would again try to come back and inwardly feel the attunement of that voice, uh, word or that melody with OM. And he said uh, if it was not feeling right, then he said I would go back and forth and make that amendment. But he said that actually he never composed any music which was not in tune with the OM vibration. He also went on to give the example of another musician whose music was actually, Swami says, very, you know, downward pulling and kind of thick and, you know, as if, you know, walking heavily. And Swamiji said that actually it had a DNA sequence that fellow found in the research of cancer cells, very uh, disorganized. It makes us think, today we are not talking about music so much, but uh, just the way we talk, but it, th those are related topics that Swami Kranandaji said much of the music we listen to outwardly today is destructive. Why? God knows. But people, you know, when they are in agony or the environment is disturbing, somehow we should be seeking light, but we end up worsening. It's like uh, that situation because every situation or level of consciousness has its own magnetism. Whereas I actually, uh, in the beginning years, I remember I once saw somebody dozing off more than one people in one particular talk of Swamiji. There were two, three people in the audience in the same row who were uh, almost falling asleep. And I thought, my goodness, if they're sleeping, they were just now, you know, okay and uh, normally this thing and later I came to know that this is a common phenomenon, not very common but his voice was so relaxing which then I had to 
I said, of course, I can look back and see what was happening, that people are not used to that level of, uh, you know, peace or calmness emanating for half an hour, one hour, you know, through somebody's voice. And like a lullaby, like a mother's lullaby, it put them to sleep. They were so peaceful in that presence. So, uh, you know, it's very interesting. So, anyway, I was making the point of the kind of music we should listen to. But let's take this message back home, friends, that uh, as we communicate with others, let us pay some attention. This will require practice of how is our tone. Again, the tone is more important, perhaps, than the words we are using. Again, as I said, you know, in difficult situations, let's, you know, we, have, we say very little and Swamiji also says another time in this book, develop the art of brevity that say a few things but say it with full meaning and sincerity and uh, that they will have much more impact uh, than everything else. And I want to suggest one or two practical things that we can do. Of course, first is meditation, then, uh, you know, singing in the choir. Uh, this is something I am also trying to do more and more in my own life that I try to sing Swamiji's music um, and because that brings a lot of harmony and those intonations can over the months and years improve the tone of our voice which has a affirming quality on our consciousness and also sharing of the consciousness we are feeling. And recently I thought of something, uh, you know, I was traveling and I was thinking how to deepen our breath and a few things just they were crossing my mind and it, I thought how about whistling as a tool now I know Swamiji whistled in one or two of his songs and uh, on a physical level it's very good to expand your breathing capacity and such but then I thought that if one can perhaps you know then I looked up looked it up and one of the writers online was saying that you know sad people rarely whistle so it can be a small tool, I won't say whistle your way through the day, but it can be maybe a small tool that you may like to experiment with to see if it uplifts your mood and again maybe whistle, try to whistle for fun and an experience of some of those songs where Swami used that beautiful tool. So thank you friends for joining this evening, this was a very fun discussion, I hope you liked it and we will meet again on one of the Wednesdays to take this discussion further. Jai Guru.